It's finally dropping! <laughs> Utopia is finally dropping! Travis has learned how to use Spotify to release shit. But um, welcome to the musical show, the show where I talk about music, and the show where, chances are, I will talk a lot about... Um, Um, Travis Scott, because he's um, releasing, isn't he? But, um, yeah. Um, I'm filled with this the night before, so I can do my predictions, because I know, 5am, when it drops, I'm immediately bumping a fair bit of shit. So, uh, yeah. Starting off with um, the tons of re-listens I've done, and um, the one EP that I missed, that being Kid K.O.'s Trap Bandicoot, which, somehow, the album content is worse than the content on the cover it's bland boring the man can't rap he has such a monotonous flow and voice and shit the lyrics are awful and aside from do, what do you mean having an okay chorus and solid beat there is literally nothing positive to say about the album whatsoever but i do want to point attention to the chorus on contra which is probably the worst thing to happen to music since boosie badass decided to drop an album a cancerous trap EP. I don't know why I'm saying that. Like the Boosie Badass um, LP that was a 0, 0.0. Didn't drop after Trap Bandicoot, but still. It's the worst thing to happen to music since Tom McDonald, I guess. Um, a cancerous trap EP. That is not worth your time, even if the cover's kind of funny. 1.4 out of 10. And now moving on to the album re-reviews. I did Nice last week that I wanted to re-listen to... See if they've grown off me. Spoiler it, they all did. And same thing for 8. Starting off with Boy Genius is the record. The lyrics are, as you'd expect, weird, but usually pretty solid and inoffensive. The instrumentals are absolutely stunning and only a couple of basic acoustic cuts that you've heard a million times. The vocals were incredible, as expected, from all three artists. And tracks such as Cool About It showed them at their best with a solid instrumental and beautiful vocal from each party, with it truly feeling like a collaboration of all three artists. Some artists could have just done more, but could have like had a bigger part in some songs, I felt. I think the worst track was definitely We're In Love, which was too long and had some poor lyricism and a basic instrumental, but the closer, A Letter To An Old Poet, has the worst and weirdest lyricism that, at the time when it, um, the album came out, I'd heard in a hot minute. It was really chaotic. A great album, for sure. That's incredible instrumentally and vocally, but lyrically, it lacks a teeny bit. 8.4 out of 10, nonetheless. It's brilliant. Moving on to the a Special and Graft's Art of Words. And the beats here, honestly, nothing short of superb. They are interesting in a range of sort of styles in their sort of boom-bap area, I guess. And they're cohesive. The rapping and lyricism is solid too, and the album has the likes of every day on it. But 38 special sings, and he really can't. And as I said, he doesn't, as I said, yeah, he can't sing. He doesn't get away with it at all on say, like, life's the same, which is carried by the verses and the lyricism. And uh, it does also affect a couple other tracks. There's also the odd beat that just wasn't anything special or memorable. That aside, though, not much else to say. It's pretty fucking great. 7.9 out of 10. Moving on to Currency and Jermaine Dupree's for Motivational Use Only Volume 1. I hope I'm flying through these because I kind of have to, which is nowhere near as good as Vice's. I, I do probably have to re-listen to that at some point, though. Um, however, the beats were still pretty superb, and the, honest, and the rapping was honestly better than on Vice's on some tracks. However, it's less consistent. Vice's doesn't have a song as well as So So Jazz, for example. Lyrically, there are some good bars, and it is largely inoffensive. And overall, as much as the title is completely false advertising, I do not feel motivated at all. It's great. 7.9 out of 10. Moving on to K Tramine, self titled, and this is a summer album. This is Album of the Summer. For a grand total of about, like, well, it's not Album of the Summer anymore. The um, Post Malone shit's out. That's Album of the Summer now. But, um, yeah, the bars are absolutely pure fun. They are terrible in a good way. Um, and are really just whack. They do uh, add a bit of humour to the uh, whole experience. And, um, yeah, the beats are solid enough, although the Sosa Sup one has already been used by Catronado on a different track, so that was kind of lazy. And there are some basic ones, such as the one on K&A. However, what really brings us down is the rapping performances, which completely ruined the verses on, say, Rebuke, with this weird sort of flow that he was going for that was just trash. And when there's also tune, it don't sound good. 
And it does feel like he wasn't trying on a couple of tracks. It can be fun in some places, but can also be mid as hell. Overall, great summer album. It is a summer album. No matter how much it's not the summer album that people wanted. And will end up being one of the albums of this summer for sure. 7.8 out of 10. Moving on to Inhalers, Cuts and Brutus, which I absolutely overrate. It's 8.7, the fuck? It's great instrumentally, and the vo this is not on par with King Cruel. It's great instrumentally, and the vocals are absolutely stunning for sure, but it's, it's really like nothing special. How many songs exist that sound just like These Are The Days? Hundreds, probably. It does still have tracks such as Love, you get, Love Will Get You There, which are amazing, absolute indie bangers. But as I said, it's nothing special, and there is a few duds. But... When it comes to Northern Special albums, this is probably probably the best. It's so enjoyable, and as I said, the vocals are amazing. Th th this band could go places for show. 7.7 .7 out of 10. Moving on to Jay Skeezer's Abolished Uncertainties, which is a solid enough boom bap album. The beats are really anything special, and the lyricism is solid, but the choruses did often suck. And Joe's singing, again, sucks. Why do members of Drumwork think that they can sing? They can't. Tracks such as the opener Revolver have a brilliant beat, and the closer Auntie Crystal has some great um, lyricism and some beautiful sampling, but Burner Phone is one of the worst samples I've ever heard of that fucking notification sound at the very start, and has some pretty weird and bad lyricism. It's just not a very good track. Overall, has some duds in all departments, but it's great. 7.6 out of 10. Um, moving on to NBA Young Boys, I Rest My Case, and at last, I Enjoy a Young Boy album! Took long enough. The beats are mostly great and are in a unique style for him that he's not touched on much. The rapping's good and, uh, as always... Yeah, the rapping's good as always. He's always got, like, a solid delivery on him. And the lyricism rarely causes any issues. Not My Friend probably has his best beat to date and it's probably one of his best tracks ever. It may still have duds such as Louis V, well, Louis V, whatever, which has a trash rage beat, but this is easily one of the best... Young Boy albums I've heard, and by his standards, no matter how many people are saying it's one of his worst, it's it's pretty solid. 7 out of 10. And at the bottom is Shoe Shoes Ignore Grief, which, yeah, it worked in the atmosphere department they were trying to make. It did make that ominous atmosphere it was going for, but it was at the expense of it really sounded like music. It sounded like almost too weird, such as in, like, say, Escarita Little Richards. Parump is probably the only one with like actually normal vocals, but it did have some awful lyricism. Um, and the lyrics in general just kind of sucked. Instrumentally, I've already said it, it didn't sound like music that much, and a lot of it was just too ugly for its own good. It's good, and it makes quite a, an amazing atmosphere, but it's at the expense of like genuine musical quality. 6.4 out of 10. 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight albums from last week I listened to. It was a really good week. Trust me, it was fucking stacked. But we do start off on a negative note with Babyface Ray's Summer's Mine. Summer is not yours, Babyface Ray. As much as summer albums have sucked this year, this has one summer bop on the whole thing. This guy had a West Side Gun feature and decided that everything had to be mid, including the actual feature. <laughs> the bars, the beat and everything. But, yeah, as I said, the actual feature wasn't that great either. And I'm also confused why he named a track Le Tyler Flow and, like, didn't get Le Tyler on it. It can't, it can't have been that hard to get Le Tyler on. He's still, like, about, like, a similar size to Babyface Ray in terms of fans, surely. Maybe slightly bigger because of um, being on XXL. But even then, people known for being shit on the fucking cypher. Can't cost that much. Among those... Dumb nitpicks that don't really make any sense are the actual criticisms, such as the rapping being awful, as always from Babyface Ray, his rapping shite, um, the bars being awful, and the beats being pretty hit or miss. There were some great ones that did carry some songs there on, such as the one on My Thoughts 4, and Skateland, as I said, is like the only genuine summer bop on the whole album, probably one of the best ones all year, because the quality sucked. But... It is a pretty awful album that has some okay tracks, but also has Leaving London, which is genuinely awful. Don't know how I didn't mention Leaving London beforehand, but that track is ranted. 2.6 out of 10. Moving on to Valet and Harry Fraud, or Vale. Valet, not Wale, with that virtuoso. 
For sure, Harry Fraud does show his skill as a producer on um, Trap Beats, as they were mostly great, and there were some beautiful samples, even if they were a bit basic. Harry Fraud's just generally a great producer, but Valet can't rap or even rhyme half the time, and the features in comparison seem like Kanye, even if they just say Twister. It's 2023, and Twister's still a thing. Or a pretty average feature for Mike Saba. Credit to O3 Greedo, though. His verse was pretty fucking great. The choruses are sort of awful, but they're also earworm, so, like, they do the job in a way, I guess? Washington Wizards is, like, sort of the track where it all went wrong, though, as the beat was basic and average in comparison to most of the other ones, and Valet does his usual awful songwriting and rapping. An album that would be one of the worst this year if it wasn't for Harry Fraud's great production on it. 5.7 out of 10. Moving on to Greta Van Fleet with Starcatcher, which is a Greta Van Fleet album. They rip off Led Zeppelin as Pear, so it's not great, but like, it's not terrible, is it? <laughs> the vocals are off on some songs, but they are mostly pretty unproblematic, and there are some solid vocal performances here and there. And that's basically all you need to know, is it's never that bad, but it's never that good. Apart from Sacred the Thread, Sacred the Thread is actually a genuinely a really good song in most ways. Overall, pretty good, but nothing special. And if you hate Greta Van Fleet, you'll hate this one. But it's, it's pretty good, 6 out of 10. Moving on to Yellow Card with Child of Dies, which was actually pretty great, to be honest. I think I predicted this to be a 4, and this is better than a 4. As much as it may be unoriginal in sections, and Childhood Eyes, the title track, is terrible, tracks such as the opener with Pierce the Veil, 3 minutes more, had genuinely great production, and Pierce had a great performance. Honest from the jump, though, is my favourite because the vocals were great and it had a really good chorus. Dashboard Confessional also went too bad on their feature, even if the lyrics were slightly corner. Got a corny on the closer, the place will go. Aside from the actual title track in Childhood Eyes, this was a genuinely pretty great EP, Fizz. I was proved wrong, pleasantly surprised at this one, 7 out of 10. Moving on to Block Party with a High Life EP, which doesn't get off to the best starts. The first two tracks weren't amazing, especially the pretty mid-sophomore track in Keep It Rolling. But Blue is actually a really good song with some beautiful guitars, and The Blood Moon ends it on a relative high, with it just being a solid track. Overall, nothing that'll end up on a year-end list in really any way. It's not the most special, but it does its job, and it's pretty damn great. 7.5 out of 10. Moving on to Blair, which with the Ballad of Darren, which is incredible instrumentally. And the vocals are usually solid, even if the production on them are, is sometimes not great. And there is the odd like moment where his vocals don't sound a bit goofy. But they're usually solid enough. But, you know, it's not the most enjoyable, which I think was kind of the point. So it's not that bad, but like... It feels a teeny tiny bit empty in a way. It's just missing something and it gets really fucking annoying. And some tracks are also just like formulaic and a bit boring, such as like The Ballad or Rotten Strings. But tracks such as Goodbye Alba or Avalon are brilliant. On average, though, the instrumentals and lyricism are beautiful and its vocals are solid, but I think... The issue I have is that it's just too polished and it sounds a teeny bit fake sometimes. I think it's just overly like squeaky clean, but that aside, it's really good. 8.1 out of 10. Moving on to Paris, Texas with Midair, which has been absolutely wronged by Anthony Fantano. I like three is a shit take. It's a phenomenal rock slash hip hop fusion that rivals that of like, say, a Gene Dawson. The features were amazing and did their job really well, and the instrumentals were superb, even if some were a bit repetitive. However, maybe it had like two or three too many tracks, and in some spots the actual rapping ruined a few tracks, as it was just a bit too raw, and yeah, and the production wasn't always the best. Sometimes the vocals were too quiet. And I'm pretty sure with the sort of punkishness of the album, they should have been a bit louder. And among this, the the lyricism, while in, say, Bullet Man, with the great yet horrifying message about school shootings, and, like, Ain't No High with a beautiful message about those 
moments in life that are really great. <laughs> Be- best way I can really describe them off the top of my head. Um, there are some tracks that don't have the best lyricism. As much as it is mostly pretty damn good, it's really good, to be honest, the lyricism for the most part. It's either really funny and fun, or it's just like really good in general. But there are moments where it's a bit too tongue-in-cheek. Tracks such as Bullet Man are undeniable masterpieces, and like Ain't No High, same thing. For their beautiful messages as those, for their beautiful, um, why can't I speak now? For their beautiful um, lyricism, for the actual song being beautiful. Those two songs that I've already sort of went through, they're incredible. And honestly, the highs are some of the best rap we've had all year. A brilliant album that rivals some of the best genre fusions we've seen this decade. 8.7 out of 10. But at the top, it's motherfucking Nas with Magic 2. And this album is absolutely phenomenal. One of the best Nas albums probably ever. The beat's incredible. And the bars are as good as ever. And probably the best we've seen from him in quite a hot minute. As much as like a lot of the tracks on KD3 had amazing bars, so did this. <laughs> tracks such as like Irvin Magic Johnson shows that he can do trap really well. As well as One Mike One Gun, which is like one of the best trap tracks in years. And Bakey Woodbine also shows that he is that he hasn't lost his sort of touch and like boom bap, neither as motion. The beat on motion and also Bakey and Woodbine are absolutely phenomenal. The beats are just incredible. Simple as that. There's like maybe one beat that's a bit too uninteresting and uh, run of the mill, but that's literally it. Apart from that, it's absolutely perfect. Hit Boy, whenever he works with Nas, he's in a different lead. And as I've pretty much said throughout, he was still in a different league here. And, yeah. There's just, like, that one dud beat. That might not even really be a dud beat. The beats were just... Basically, the production, the beats are perfect. There you go. But, like, every so often, there's just that questionable bar, like the We Need to Bring Back Beheadens bar, which I think was on Motion, maybe. And that off flow in the chorus of um, Office Hour, that was just too fast and it didn't really match the beat. The 50 Cent feature was pretty good, though. And, yeah. It's outstanding, though. And <laughs> you can tell by, like, how I'm speaking and how slowly I'm, like, releasing the f- fucking flaws that I have with the album that there really isn't many flaws at all. It's absolutely incredible. And one of the best... It's, it's rap album of the year. There you go. 9.4 out of 10. Fantastic. But, will it be um, Rap Album of the Year for much longer? When we've got motherfucking Utopia. Yes, yes it will. Utopia, I presume it's going to be Hidden Features. Uh, nor would I want to um, spoil the features anyway. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be because I don't even know like the track list. But, you know, it's up to you. I hope you'll be bumping it anyway. Come on. Travis is back for the first time in five years, and he ain't even gone listen. So, um, yeah. Utopia, of course. My prediction is that however long it's going to be, however many tracks, is probably going to be around, like, what it usually is. Like, 15 to 19. I'm going to guess, like, 50 minutes to an hour long. Um, I'm predicting it's going to be an ace. And um, Post Malone's also um, releasing Austin, which is... 15, 16, 17 tracks, if I can remember rightly. I'll um, check his Insta, hang on. Um, yeah, we know. Um, it has... Um, oh, Jesus Christ, spoiler alert. Um, it has 17 tracks. Um, I don't know how long it is. It's probably around like the 50 minute mark. And pretty much everything from the album has been really good. It's been, it's maybe not been the most special musically, but like, it's still been really fucking good. <laughs> Basically that. So I'm predicting this to also be an eight and his best album by fucking far. Uh, 12 Carat Toothache was pretty mid. So it was definitely going to be a step up from that, from the singles alone. But um, yeah. Also, I want to shout out my guy, Zell who's um, 
someone I know on TikTok, as much as, a, as he's a complete arsehole, he's funny. <laughs> and he drops music on SoundCloud. He's dropped um, his new album, Kaleidosphere. That's his third, third project of the year. It features pro. It features um like help production wise from um the vintage ambience fella who I also know from TikTok, and also General Platinum who drops the pretty iconic the Red Room, <laughs> which is iconic for the wrong reasons because it's awful. I will be reviewing that and it will definitely be getting at least a zero point zero chances of hot because it's. Really, just goofy, edgy um, joke rap, and it's not even funny. But yeah, if you're around like rap talk and like music talk on like TikTok and shit, you'll probably know the Red Room. So um, yeah, it features the general platinum fella from that, unfortunately. <laughs> so um, yeah, there you go. I'll be back to Moz, and I'll um, do all the rest of them. Because, like, I'm not listening to them instantly like, instantly when they come out. Like, I'm going to do with them um, Posty Maloney and um, Travi Poo. And I'm literally going to listen to the fucking Zell thing now. Because it's out now. So, yeah. As I'm filming this on the Thursday, it came out a day early. Because, I don't know, sales. <laughs> it's on SoundCloud. It's 1am. Camera quality is terrible, but we move. Um, I'm just going to do these albums as well. Starting off with um, Tech Nine, <laughs> everyone's favorite rapper, with um, Bliss, which will feature Conway the Machine, X Razors, um, Joiner. Oh fuck's sake, Joiner Lucas, Roblo, Dastar, King D, Lil Ava, The Popper, Kim Dracula, Hush, Chubby Cool, King Iso, Head to Don, X Rated, Two Gun Kevy, Head to Don again, Durand. Bernard, Kaveen Herbie, Jerry Robinson, Ubi, Zed K Crown, and Black the Grimstress. 25 songs, and also Nave Monzo. 25 songs, 1 hour, 60 minutes, 3. I can wait for this one. Um, and then we're going to move on to Carly Rae Jepsen with um, the follow-up to The Loneliest Time, The Loveliest Time. 13 songs, 43 minutes long. I'm guessing a 6. Then Aphex Twin with their EP, well, his EP, Black Box Life Recorder 221F slash Inner Room 7 F760. Goofy ass um, EP name, but it's four songs, 40 minutes long, um, eight. And finally, Anne Marie with Unhealthy Deluxe, which the Deluxe at least features Shania Twain, Khaled, and um, the Deluxe only, I'm pretty sure. Exclusive is Mini and G Idol's Expectations. 16 songs, 41 minutes long, 4. And, um, yeah. Just got done finished. Um, just got done finishing Utopia. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Um, so, yeah, I just got last few things to do. Shout out Soldier Boy vs. Soldier World 3. 14 songs, 32 minutes long. I've already got one terrible Soldier Boy album <laughs> done this year. I'm going to skip this one, thank you very much. And um, Ty Fontaine with whatever the fuck you came is meant to be pronounced. It's a collab album with him and SJR featuring Amigo Lee. A track called Hashtag Free the Seals. Multiplayers and um, Junior's also featured. 12 songs, 26 uh, minutes long is six. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Sorry about the awful video quality, but no apologies are going to be made for the quality of fucking Utopia, man. Spoiler alert, it's good. <laughs>